Hello and welcome to SolidSanity.com. If you enjoy this video, please make sure to sign up for our email newsletter. My name is Nick Leister, and in this video we're going to take a look at an advanced surfacing technique, which is based around creating surfaces to create more surfaces. Now I know that sounds sort of complex, but when you see me actually working with these surfaces, it'll make a whole lot more sense. Now as you can see, I've modeled up a handle on the screen. This handle is not complete yet. It's going to be part of a gaming controller system. But what you can see is that there are a lot of organically shaped surfaces on this handle. There are very few straight lines. That makes it really hard to model within SolidWorks. And this is where this advanced technique really comes in handy. It's when you have these organic shapes that are hard to model with any other method. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to show you how I started this part. Now this is the first sketch of this part. And I know it looks pretty complicated, but I assure you it's actually not that bad. It's really only four lines. If I zoom in here, you'll see that a lot of these lines are actually just construction lines, so they don't really count. We have this first line, which is where the grooves for the handle are. We have this line, which I created, which pretty much runs down the center of this part. And then we have these lines over here, which describe the curvature of the handle where it meets your palm. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is actually extrude this center line out as a surface. Now the reason why I'm doing this might not be very clear to you, but I assure you that it will make sense after three steps. Just three steps, wait, and it'll make a lot of sense. So, like I said, I'm just going to extrude this center line out. And the amount that I'm going to extrude it out is just so that it's beyond where the handle will end. All right, and now I'm going to click OK. And the next thing that I'm going to do is create a, another sketch which describes the curvature, the side curvature of this handle. What I'm going to do after that is project that sketch onto this surface and then cut away the top. Now, as I said, I'm going to create a sketch. So, as you can see, I don't have any good planes for creating a sketch on. Maybe this right plane would be okay, but what I really want to do is have a plane which is touching these four corners. So I'm going to create that plane right now. Let me go into my reference geometry, plane, select three vertices, that's all I need. And my plane is defined, I can click OK. And now what I'm going to do is once that plane is selected, I'm going to go back into my sketch tools. I'm going to create a sketch on that plane, get into a normal two view, and I'm going to use my spline to create an organic shape. And that's sort of going to look like this. This probably isn't exactly what I had in my previous thing here, but you get the idea. It's just a shape. It's an organic shape. And again, this is the side profile of the handle. I'm just going to make it look like that. And then click OK. And now once I exit this sketch, what I'm going to do is project this sketch onto this surface using a split line. To do that, features, curves, split line. I'm going to project this onto these faces. And once that's split, if I don't like the actual curve or anything like that, I'll show you. I can actually just go back in at any time and edit that sketch and then everything's good after that. I'll just sort of move it around. I actually need to show that sketch. Do this. Just move it up or down. And the geometry will update to reflect that change. And now what I'm going to do is just delete these top surfaces right here. So I'm just going to go insert, face, delete. I'm going to delete these guys. The next thing that I'm going to do is create something called a ruled surface. 
Now the ruled surface command is generally used when designing plastic parts to find where the tooling split is going to be. But we're going to use it for a different reason here. You'll see why in just a second. In order to use the ruled surface command, simply select it from up here and then select the edges where you want the surface to be. In this case it's going to be all of these edges. And it doesn't really matter the size of the surface right here that's going to be irrelevant. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to actually delete all of these surfaces in the end. These surfaces that we're creating now are really only reference surfaces for our geometry later on. Now with this said, once I get this surface in here, we'll click the OK button, and now we have this ruled surface which is at all times normal to these surfaces down here but connects at the ends right here. And now what I'm going to do is use this ruled surface, this edge right here, as a guide for the connection between this sketch and the center of this controller handle. Now in order to do this connection, we could potentially use a surface loft, but I like to use the boundary surface, which is very similar to the surface loft, because it has more controls, it's actually a more powerful tool. And so what I'm going to do is just enter into the boundary surface command. And the way that the boundary surface command works is that there are two boxes, direction 1, direction 2. You simply select the curves which go in direction 1 in this box and then select the curves which go in direction 2 in this box. I know that sounds like a simplified explanation and initially we're actually only going to use this direction 1 box up here but in our third boundary surface, we're actually going to use both boxes, and I'll show you how to do that. So, the way that we're going to create our surface is by, in this box, selecting this edge right here, and then this sketch right here. Now, this is going to bring up the selection manager. I just want this segment of the sketch, and I'll click OK. And then it creates pretty much a straight line between these two entities. Now this is where this ruled surface is really going to come into hand, in handy because I know that along this edge I want this section to be tangent to this surface. And so what I'm going to do in this box is select tangent to face. Now this doesn't always update very well so sometimes you actually have to go in and reselect it. There it goes. So now this face is tangent to this ruled surface right here. And over here, what I'm going to want to do is select Normal to Profile. Again, that didn't look like it really took. I'll try that again. Normal to Profile. It's two ways to do the exact same thing. You can do it over here, or you can do it from within the viewport. Now, this is really important because there, are, this plastic handle, obviously, is going to be made out of plastic. Now, in order to create this plastic handle, there's going to be a tooling split. And in order to get it out of the mold, there needs to be a draft on the part. When you're um, creating this draft, it's important to note that with the boundary surface command, it's really easy to apply your draft angle within this command. So if you wanted to, you could actually um, you could do that now. Say you needed a draft angle of 3 degrees that would make that draft angle at 3 degrees. But for this particular part, um, I'm just creating it just to show you what it's going to look like so there's no need for a draft angle. And now I'll click the OK button. And as you can see, we have our first finger groove right here. Now I want to point out that there are probably a few different ways which this finger groove could have been modeled. What you, see, what you saw me do probably isn't the most efficient method for modeling that finger groove, but it's really quite robust. Even though there are three features which pretty much sit on top of this feature right here. If I wanted to, I could actually move some of these surfaces. I'm going to try to do that now. And what you'll notice is that this should rebuild pretty quickly. So it's a really robust way to work. 
Now what I'm going to do is just finish some of these other finger grooves. And I'm actually going to skip this uh, ring finger groove and move on to the middle finger groove. And the reason why I'm going to do that is just to show you how you can use the boundary surface differently within this ring finger groove when I actually get to that point. So just like I created this guy, I'm going to go whoops, into my boundary surface command, select this edge right here, and this edge right here. Now I want to make that tangent to the face. This guy I want to make normal to profile. I'll click OK. And now what I'm going to do is go into my boundary surface command again and I'm going to create this. I'm going to fill this gap essentially. So in order to do this, I'm going to select that edge just like I did before. I'm going to select this edge. This is going to be tangent to face. Again, this one's going to be normal profile. And this is where it gets interesting. This is where we can actually use the second direction option. And we can select that edge and this edge over here. And now what we can do is make sure that these are both tangent to the faces which they touch and click OK. And now we pretty much have the outline of these finger holds. And now what I'm going to do is just delete or hide this ruled surface. If I go to View, Hide All Types, now you can sort of see how you can create geometry like this within SolidWorks. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to sign up for our email newsletter. And thank you for visiting SolidSanity.com.